don't show up for the trial, don't you? If you're even toying with that idea, I'll take you right back in there. Oh, no, no, it's just that I, I think they're going to find me guilty. The sheriff said trespassing. At the most, they'll give you a stiff fine. We'll pay it. Does that come out of my salary? Now, whose salary would you like it to be taken out of? Uh-oh, here comes the fuzz. This is the one that busted me. Hi there. Mister, I don't know if she's your daughter, your wife, or just a close friend, but I don't think she was part of that bunch. She maybe got herself mixed up with a bad lot, but they're not really her type. People, not types. Easy, Peg. But she does have a point. We don't like troublemakers up here. This is God's country. Peaceful. That's the way we like it. I wonder what God would think about what you're doing to his forest. I think you better take her down the mountain. Thank you very much, but I was fine. You didn't have to ride to my rescue. What happened? Did you get up on the wrong side of the cell this morning? I am kind of hostile today, aren't I? Anyhow, you won't be hurt if I tell you your rescue is only part of the reason I came up here. Well, I didn't think I made the cover of Crime Magazine, if that's what you're thinking. Why am I so snotty today? Right. Get in. Where are we going? To your campsite. Isn't that why I find the young film genius? The what? Dead Sands. Is that a value judgment or a put down or what? What I know is just what I read. Genius is a word that comes up often enough to be noticed. Besides, I'm a fan of his, remember? Well, what do you want to see him about? Somebody found out I was coming up here and I was drafted into talking some foundation business with Mr. Sands. Oh, Ted's gonna love that. Oh, believe me, it wasn't my idea. But I do think, despite his reputation, the Howard Foundation's entitled to a question or two. I mean, for $115,000, we ought to be able to find out something like, uh, how's it coming, buddy? But I thought that's what I was here for. I mean, why have I been slaving over those weekly reports? Or does anybody read them? I read them. First two made sense. The rest sounded like postcards from summer camp. written and everything. I thought the sheriff's office called it trespassing. Mm, that was different. See, that was at the mill. Besides, uh, I think for what I did, they overreacted. No, I've been waiting. For what I did. Mm. I went over a fence to plant a mic, a hidden microphone, in a work area. And one of the guys came back for lunch, and uh, you found me on the menu. Soup du jour, so to speak. You were caught planting a microphone. You see, Ted wanted to shoot from far away, hidden, with long lenses. That way he got good candid dialogue and everything, you know? You really picked up the jargon. It's fantastic. It's so exciting. Not only making the film, but Ted Sands' philosophies and everything. I feel so involved here. I feel so alive. You only seemed alive and out of jail. Jail was only because Ted Sands is showing some truth to the world. About the world. And the world is so uptight, it doesn't want to hear it. By the world, you mean Pacific Wood Products Corporation? I mean everybody. But them, too. How far? It's just up the road. Didn't you see him? No, no. What about Mike? You see Mike? Oh, he's out digging the woods someplace, I guess. <laughs> Who's your dude? Oh, that's one of my editor bosses. Did you tell him yet? Oh, no. Don't say anything, okay? Dan, come on. Hi. Hi. I'm Tracy. Dan Farrell. <laughs> Come on. 
hide them. Peggy, wait a minute. You gotta learn to look at the light. He's loading some stuff in the tank. Okay? Okay, then. That's Zemo. He's our gaffer, camera operator, and sound man, just for starters. You sure not your PR man? <laughs> he... He was chief flunky around here before I came on the scene. Hi, Ted. This is Ted Sands. I bet you photographed like a 100% movie star, man. I think you're gonna like yourself. Come on, I got some pictures of you and Max leaving the slammer. Max, that's me. Hey, Trace, would you break down yesterday's stuff into smaller reels? I got the hernia trying to lift us. Sure. You help her, huh? Okay. Come on, come on, Phil. How'd uh, you know my name? Well, I was the one who called your office, and I busted Max. Are you interested in film? I'm interested in this film. Oh, I see. Big Brother's watching over me after all. Huh? Well, maybe that's how it looks, but believe me, I didn't come up here to play watchdog. But you're here, aren't you? You see, I don't remember making any promises to Glenn Howard or his patronizing foundation. All I'm supposed to do is put some truth on film. The deal was that I explore the ecological awareness of American industry. See how much is real interest, how much just soapy tokenism. There were no strings attached to that 115 grand. Not one. Okay, but you've got to realize that Peggy's arrest was pretty hard to understand on a panel boardroom. They're a pretty conservative bunch, especially with a six-figure grant to a self-professed revolutionary filmmaker. Mm. Mm hmm You said they. What about you? I told you. The last thing I wanted was to come up here for anybody in the legal department to bail Peggy out. But this is your third film, and... Four. Summer Rock Festival, Columbia Riots, and the Baltimore Ghetto Explosion Blues. Yeah, I saw the Rock Festival. Very impressive. Anyway, what I've been trying to say is that uh, I'm on your team. In fact, it was my idea that Grampy made in the first place. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. So if you could show me some film now, just so I can go back to the board with something to calm their nerves. Uh, I don't have to show you anything. You know that, don't you? Yes, yes, I know the grant's terms, but I'm hoping you will. You see, on the practical side, you've received $70,000 over the past six months as a final payment of $45,000, do you? I'd hate to see them withhold that. A cutoff? Hey, man, you can't cut off the bread. That'll sink the ship. That money is my print money, color correction, opticals, everything. You can't do that. I didn't say it would be done. Listen, I'm not here to be critical of your work. I just want to make sure that there aren't any surprises, that's all. Yeah, sure. Okay, I'm sorry. I blew my top. I, uh, I'm just not used to having my arm twisted so quietly. Look, why don't you ship them some film? Let them see what's happening. Yeah, maybe. Everything going all right? Oh, yeah, man. Everything's fine. So far, everything's right on. Well, when can I see some film? Well, I can probably show you some of our stuff later on this afternoon. Is that okay? Mm. Tracy, you set it up? Whatever you say. Hey, Ted, something's coming. Truck? No, it's car, I think. Okay, well, hey. Make yourself at home, have a beer. Show me the ice boxes, will you, please? Sure. Hey, do you think you can do it? I know I can. Come on. A little primitive, huh? <laughs> Let's get the job done. Good work. How about a beer? Fine. Um, Mr. Farrell, I, uh, I wouldn't like to see anything happen to Ted's film to mess it up. Thanks. I feel the same way. Then take Peggy back with you. Peggy? How could Peggy harm the film? But she wouldn't. But something could happen to her. I mean, she got busted and you came flying up here. If something else happened. Like what? Like, I don't know. But what if something did? Wouldn't uh, your big shot boy get uptight enough to cancel out? Well, maybe I'm a little slow, or maybe you just better be more explicit. Well, all right. I think there's going to be trouble. Understand? The kind where people get hurt. I say pack her up and get her far away. Away from you and Ted Sands? Listen, you got to believe me. Bad times are coming. Violent times. But not bad enough to scare you away. Five months ago, I was going for my master's in cinematography. And Ted came to the university and gave a couple of lectures. We got it on. Now, I've learned more about film in five months with Ted than in three years of class. 
Now, I know what I want. I've got talent, and I learn fast. That means I'm going to make it. So take her back, give her a raise, and something that she feels is important to do. And she'll be happy. There's no reason why I should believe you about this violence, is there? No. Guess not. I shouldn't have said anything. Just like that? Yeah. The moon is in Capricorn or something. Sorry I brought it up. I don't think you are. I think there's more and I want to hear it. I'm just nervous about the flick, that's all. Besides Peggy's arrest, anything else happen? All right. There's a guy named Mike. Get it from him. He lives in a cabin off the main road. The trail by the property sign as you go down. Mike. He can give you a better idea. Beverly says that's how it is. And he's more detached. You're trespassing on company property. I want you out. Maybe what you're afraid of is already here. So what you're saying is your company is reneging on your agreement. We agreed to let you film certain operations and to allow you to camp here while you were doing it. We kept our share of the bargain. But in plain English, Mr. Sands, we figure you've been conning us. Well, on what is your company hanging this paranoia? That your uh, hard hats don't dig long hair? Let me tell you what I don't dig. I don't think a man snowing me with a passionate speech about ecology than going out and putting a lot of slander in this camera. I question your motives here, Mr. Sam. What do you mean you question? You don't question me, my friend. My understanding with your people is the same when I have every place I work. I shoot what I want. No controls, no censorship. The truth, man. I'm sorry, but I'm not up here to be your company's propaganda arm. I didn't come here to argue. Whatever the merits of your position, that boat has already sailed. If his position has merits, then it should be heard. And you would be Mr. Dan Farrell? Would be and am. Good. The sheriff in Pine Tree has a copy of that order. What it does, it enjoins you and your people from filming our operations in any skidway, yarding route, bucking and felling area, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Just what do you mean by his people? He's got nothing to do with this. Well, Mr. Farrell, Howard Publishing and the Howard Foundation is what's paying for this operation. I mean, this is your money, isn't it? The Howard Foundation authorized a grant to Mr. Sands. It's the beginning and end of our responsibility and involvement. Well, we feel different. And so did the court. And when you read that, you'll see that you have until noon tomorrow to pack it up, get out, all of it. If the law don't move fast now, you always got a supply of goons, right? Now, this mentions certain matters that came to your attention. You don't enumerate them. Well, the company's position is clear enough. The order says everything it has to. And I don't tend to waste any more time discussing it. I wish you luck, Sans. I just hope your good sense in this situation equals what I understand is a big talent. I don't trust them. Make sure they're gone. How do you like being a movie producer? Not much. That stuff just now, that's a bluff. Well, you're not planning to leave tomorrow? I don't want trouble, man. I just want to make a film. Say a couple of things that should be said. No, I'm not going to run. There's too much running these days. Dan, can I say something? Sure. Uh, well, I don't know exactly how to say this, but it's something that I've been thinking a lot about for, for the last month. I think I'm in a rut at Howard. I mean, uh, on a scale of one to ten, what's my contribution? One point nothing. Yeah, maybe that's something we should talk about. But I don't think there's really anything to talk about. I guess I already made up my mind. I just didn't know whether I should write a letter or something. I mean, are re resignation letters for executives only? Dan, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay here and work for Ted. Does what? Assistant. Lab assistant, to start with, or something like that. See, the title's not really important. What's important is the way I feel. When I'm here, I really feel alive, participating. And it's something that's important. Well, on a scale of one to ten, we'd miss you somewhere in the neighborhood of eight to nine. <sighs> Thank you. 
I'm sorry. Can we talk about this again before I leave? Sure. I should tell you, I guess I've got a couple reservations about these new friends of yours. Dan, that's not fair. Maybe, Peg, but that's the way I feel. Okay. Is there a motel in town? Count them. Two. Second one on the left is a clean one. That's important to you. Thanks. driving by. Are you a friend of hers? Well, I hope so. We're the same publishing firm in Los Angeles. But she doesn't work there anymore. Or so it seems. Would you like some herb tea? Good for the psyche. He's got a lot of vitamin C. Uh, sounds fine. I seem to have missed lunch somewhere. All right. Oh, I like this. I like this. Oh, thank you very much. Have I ever seen your work? Well, it depends on where you hang out. Now, the Whitney in New York, they've got a bench I made. Junk. Most of the stuff I make, I give away after I finish it. It's making it that counts, not keeping it. When I have it here in my hands, it's alive. After I give it away, it's... Seeing the others, hearing them talk about you, I thought you'd be more their contemporary. Well, I'm a very, very old soul. I've been around a long time. It's my, my 21st incarnation. Incarnation? Yeah, can't seem to get off that wheel. I guess I haven't learned whatever lesson it is that I'm here to learn. I don't have any sugar, but I've got some honey around somewhere. Oh, well, anyway, you drink it, it's fine. I drink it neat. Oh, that's like right out of an old Disney cartoon, isn't it? Like every morning, the birds fly in and they make my bed. Well, I might sweep up the floor. That's right. Yeah. It's happily ever after for that. No good, huh? I think I'll stick with the vitamin C. There you go. The girl Tracy. The girl Tracy. There's something else. Well, she feels there might be some violence up here. You think she's right? Well, I think the kind of violence she met seems remote, except for one thing. You're looking at this, huh? You walked into a tree. No, I walked into two of them. Both were in loggers' boots. Oh, they'd had a couple of beers too many, that's all. Well, I used to be that way myself. It's one of the reasons I'm here. It's just their way, man. They let it build up inside of them. It's got to come out, and I just happen to be in the way. That's all. Oh, you should have seen this beauty a week ago. And the details aren't important. Ah, oh, forget it. They just bounced me around a little bit and staggered on. Now, you sound as if you didn't fight back. And it blew their minds, too. I guess I disappointed them. Well, don't you ever get mad? 
Did anything? Dan Farrell, let's take a walk. Seems pretty selective, pretty controlled. Selective destruction, controlled destruction remains destruction, doesn't it? Ted calls it a gang rape. I think that's very descriptive. Is this what his film's all about? The film? I have to ask him about that. As far as I know, it's about people, communication. That's what it's all about, isn't it? For everyone. Communication between people. It's also senseless. Why don't they see? Ted, you ought to talk to him, really. He told me some very startling facts, showed me evidence on film. They move in here with their machines, and when they leave, what used to be a forest is a wasteland of stumps. Square miles of amputation. The whole ecology of the place is destroyed. Animals, birds, insects, they're all affected. And man, too. And the rain washes at the soil and washes it away. Well, there's only one Earth, brother. There's no place to return the empties and get a new one. It's a throwaway. When you empty this one, that's all there is. There ain't no more. I'm here in this auto graveyard to demonstrate new finish, the once-a-year car polish. Simply wipe it on and wipe it off. There's no rubbing, no buffing. Look how new finish restored a deep, hard shine to even this weather-beaten old car. You see, new finish is not a wax. It's a space-age polymer formula that shines better and lasts longer. And here's proof. An independent laboratory tested new finish against several leading brands of car polish. After simulating a full year of punishing weather, New Finish had the highest gloss and actually retained 90% of its original shine. Next, we polished this car with New Finish and ran it through 52 car washes. After all the harsh detergents and scrubbing, the water still feeds. You'll find New Finish is great for fiberglass boats, too. So get New Finish, the once-a-year car polish. And between polishings, use New Finish Poly Car Wash to clean your car. It's specially formulated to help preserve and maintain your car's finish. New finish only at Thrifty Drug, True Value, Montgomery Ward, and TG&Y. This Monday at Santa Anita, if you have the luck of the Irish in our St. Pat's pitch, and you can do this, you could win one million dollars. picture of you from the way Tracy talks. <laughs> I was married once, a long time ago. I'm not very good with the chicks. Can't seem to get it together with them. But Tracy... I don't know. If I thought there was going to be any danger, if I thought she'd be hurt in any way, 
Well, I'm no hero, man, but I'd get her out of here and fast. Believe me, there will be no violencing or hating. Maybe Tracy knows something you don't. No, Tracy's a weird chick in a lot of ways, but she's straight. But she's with me. Okay, Mike. If you say she is, then she is. I say so. See you again, brother. You're welcome to my pad any time. Thank you. Oh, by the way, if you're around after four, I'll buy a drink. I work at the Blue Axe. <laughs> the Blue Axe. <laughs> Wouldn't they just call it the Blue Axe? <laughs> it's a bar in town. Zemo? Hey, Zemo! Here! Right here in the old forest, primeval. I'm evil. Come on, man, don't do that to me. We're ready to roll. Far out. Baby? Our friend's back. Hello, friend. Hello, little brother. Come on, say hello. He's talking to you. Hello, bird. He won't talk to you. Let's go, man. Hey. You're not with the good things anymore. What's good? Like how many miles it is from here to 18th Street and the stink of that garbage dump. You think so? I don't think so. Well, a long time ago, maybe once I thought that way, but I know different since. There's no way out. You can go to the moon and stick a big flag up there and the president can say, cool, baby, but inside it's still 18th Street. It still stinks. Well, it'll change. You'll change it. Teddy, you'll change it with this. I'm every kind of brother. And I'm more than that. I'm I'm your other half. You and me, we we make a one. Come on. I lose my light at four o'clock in these woods. We got film machine. Officers are just this side of that green chain. Now, that's the longest building, but you want the one just this side of it. Now, you asked for a Mr. Chapman. He's around there someplace. Thanks. I've used your wood, Mr. Chapman. And our paper, too, I'll bet. But if you hear about Ted Sands and his crew, why, that matter's almost resolved, isn't it? I gather you're not a fan of his. I'm not a fan of any troublemaker. Are you sure that's what he is? Now, listen, he's your boy, isn't he? Besides, why come to me? You feel the way you do? Go see the sheriff. I like to avert trouble before it starts. Mr. Chapman, there's something in the wind, and I got a feeling that... Some of your men may be involved. I'm sorry. You don't know our men. They cut from a different cloth than Ted Sands and his kind. You seem so quick to indict his kind. Isn't that what's called bias? We're all biased one way or the other. My daughter, for instance, she can't stand the new skirts. Well, that's hardly bias. My daughter will lead the violence. You don't know my daughter. No, I don't. But how well do you know Ted Sands or any of the others? You're really sold on him, aren't you? Or are you? Maybe you're just doing a little digging. Maybe it's just a question of fairness. 
Those kids say that they're peaceful and peace-loving. Mr. Chapman, if you know something different, I don't think you should keep it a secret. Well, Ted Sands came to us. Passed our approval of film some of our operations. Said he was doing a film on ecology. Wanted to show the positive side. How instead of stripping the land like we used to, we planted whole new forests. For every tree we cut down, we planted new ones. Tell me, why isn't he filming that? Why only the harvesting of trees? Why not the planting? Frankly, I think he's trying to catch a free ride on this ecological bandwagon. See all the ugly stumps. See the big, bad lumber company desecrate God's wilderness. Well, there's no truth to that? Well, like I said, once. He changed. We did it years ago before it became fashionable. That's very commendable. Maybe. Just good business logic. We're not like the oil boys. They take it out of the ground, they got no way of putting it back. Of course, they get a depletion allowance, but one day it'll be gone. That won't happen to us. Not now. Mr. Chapman! Mr. Chapman! What is it? There's a radio call for you. It says there's trouble on Skidway 3. What kind of trouble? Ah, it's those kids with that camera again. They're looking to get their heads busted. All right, follow me. here nothing serious we took care of it okay where are they that man was here before with nature boy now listen somebody better start moving his mouth so i can understand it and fast i'm wearing a tie right now but if you forgot where i started with this company i'm here to show you and you better believe it we found that smart apple and his bunch of hippies sneaking around carrying tomahawks bombs what he was taking photographs of the machinery which is something he wasn't supposed to do. That's what we were told, weren't we? You weren't told to do it by yourself. That's why we got laws. That's why we got a sheriff. We didn't run him off. Well, not really run him off, you know. Now, look, we asked him to leave, and we were real polite. Is that right? Right. All right. Let's have it without the fertilizer. While we were talking to them, some of his bunch got around and spilled that whole deck. But by the time we got that taken care of, they were gone. And that's the whole story? Yeah, pretty much. Charlie, they hurt? No. I believe them. Wait a minute. I like your definition of hurt. I said they're not hurt. I'd like to get through, Mr. Chapman. Sure. All right, man. If they're still around, you find them. First thing you tell them. Noon. Tomorrow. The first thing. I ask them what happened. What are you standing around for? Get rid of that stuff. Straighten it up. Come on, get moving. Hold it. They just uh, suddenly appeared and rushed you. That's the whole story? Oh, it was awful. I had three heart attacks. Now, no provocation, huh? No, not really. No, it was very quiet, and then all of a sudden they were swarming all over us. Anyway, I ran like a bandit. Then you didn't see what happened. No, but it should be coming up right now, isn't it, Ted? Mm-hmm. Would you like to see the rest of it? Yeah. Turn the logs loose. Simo. 
Maybe I think he saved our lives. How would he use this film? <laughs> what do you mean, how will I use this film? It's exciting, all right, but how does it fit into a film dealing with ecology? Who knows? I don't know. I never know until it's finished. I mean, uh, I don't work from a script. Life doesn't either, does it? I don't tell stories, I tell the truth. And the sum total of what I got, when it's all over, that's when it comes alive. It's what happened. I thought one function of art was to create order out of chaos. Well, who's coming on art? What art, man? What do I care about that garbage? Now look, maybe I'll use this, maybe I won't. I just don't know. Dad, the manager's dad. Yes, yeah, sure, I know. I'm sorry. Love, man, that's the answer. Hmm? Love of work, love of self, love of life, of women, of your brother. I just send out waves of love that drown all hate. That's right. <laughs> I'm looking for a guy named Mike. Take your pick. Now, this Mike is tall. He's got a beard. Him? In the kitchen. Thanks. There was some trouble in the woods. I heard. They're very paranoid in there. The curse of the possessed. To possess is to be possessed. Both meanings. Caught, imprisoned, possessed. As in, possessed of the devil. Possessed psychotically in the head. One has, one tries to protect what one has. It becomes a whole way of life. And the other way of life is meaningless. And any threat to that artificiality is as horrible a thought as the end of galactic life, of everything. Everything. Now, some of these jokers out here, they, they have a very definite axe to grind, if you'll accept the pun. Some of them like their work. They like the air, the whole feeling of outsideness. The others, ones, the ones who don't, now, they have to fight to open their eyes every morning, to have the heart and the guts to make it through to nightfall, and feeling that way, all it takes is one little push to fight. And whoever called today gave that push. What do you mean, called? Now, they called this morning. They said that Ted's picture had put them all away, but if they wanted to do anything about it, maybe it's skid away three. But who would know that, besides Sands and the kids who work with him? Uh, somebody must be watching him. I mean, it seems everywhere I go, I, I spot one of them. I don't know, maybe I'm paranoid. Why are you making it out to be so weird? I've done that all day. Uh, I felt that way all day. The answers I've come up with just don't make any sense. Then maybe you're not asking the right questions. Yes, right, Freddy. Hey, listen, if you're not going back to L.A. tonight, you're welcome to crash my pad. The door's open, there's an extra sleeping bag, and you just help yourself to anything you want, you, uh, except my tools. Aren't those possessions? Aren't you attached to them? Huh? They're attached to me. Thanks, Mike. Yahoo! Charlie Graham? Hey, Graham! Hey, Charlie!
Yeah, there he is, right there. Go get him. Let's go, come on. Peggy. She split. You ready to talk about what happened? I won't tell you. I'll show you. I've got it all here from beginning to end. How's Mike? He's still out. He fell. What was he doing there? I'll show you. Cut it off. I don't know what's going He's hurt bad. Yeah. He'll be okay. You wait and see. You're responsible. If anything happens... If... He knew what he was doing. You're responsible. That's enough. I feel bad enough already without you laying that on my head. Is that the truth? Do you really feel bad? Is that really the truth? The truth comes expensive, doesn't it? Mr. Farrell, there's going to be a full hearing on this. We'll need your testimony, too, so I'm afraid you're going to have to be there. Back down the hill at Santa Rita. I intend to be there. I don't like any of the stories I heard. It better make sense at the hearing. And Chapman of Pacific Wood is holding the Howard Foundation liable for all property damage. You know that won't stand up in court. Well, maybe. Somebody said there was pictures of what happened. He's a man who'd know. I'd like to see what you've got. Can you process the film? 
I can, so you'll have to wait. Let's have it. Come on. You can't even touch it without a court order, and you know it. Your camper is impounded, Mr. Sands, and your equipment. Whatever you do, you'll do as my men stand by. But if you're looking for guilt, I suggest you talk to some of those hard-headed meatballs. Some of those fascist, night-riding, vigilante meatballs. We're gonna talk to everybody. Don't you worry, none. Everybody will have his say. Sands. You still around, Farrell? Where is he? At the hospital. Doing penance? No, about 200 feet of 35 millimeter stock. I don't think it's real to him unless he sees it through a viewfinder. I thought they impounded all this stuff. Somebody must have looked up the law. Tracy with him? Tracy, Mr. Editor, has flown the coop. Nobody seems to know where the lady is. Good thing all around, I'd say. She'd really freak if she was here. She really would. Why? Because you ain't heard. Mike's blind. Mm, it was just a rumor. Not anymore. Tracy is too late to hide, and you know it. Open the door. That's probably the first time it's been locked in 12 years. All right, Mr. Farrell. You found me. But I can't help you. Why'd you run? I just wanted my own company for a while. This is a good place to be alone. The vibes are good here. Mike is permanently blind. You're lying. Zamo told me I checked the hospital. He's lost 80% of his sight, both eyes. You're a liar. I'll drive you down there right now. You can check it yourself. Can you still feel, Tracy? There's ambition already burned out, all your feelings. If they opened you up, would you look like Ted Sands inside? Yeah. You're the key to it all, Tracy. Like now. Well, that depends. That depends on a lot of things. Tell me who started the fire. You'll see in the film he shot later. The fire was an accident. And Mike, what was he doing there? I want to talk about Mike. He didn't need us to come in here and fill his head full of garbage. How did he get involved? It was me, I guess. Ted saw him in town and liked his face. I wanted to use him in the picture. Said he'd be like a living symbol of the forest. You know, innocent, beautiful. Mike said no. Said he was too old. Said he'd found the road to peace and content. I called him an ostrich. I mean, he kept saying, you kids, and your fight, and your battle. I mean, I told him it was his fight, too. The truth and what's right have, have nothing to do with age. And then Ted got to him. I don't know what Ted said. <laughs> no, Teddy can really talk. 
and what he said, but uh, there was much, just looking for barricades to storm. I guess, that, I guess that's what he was doing there last night. Ted knew, or he wouldn't have been there. Ted said he wanted to get a shot of man defying machines. Anyhow, you did a good job on Mike. He's in love with you. I don't want to hear about that. You don't feel there are any dues to pay? Or is Mike the only one? Well, it's, it's just something we're going to have to learn to live with, that's all. Damn it, I'm talking about criminal negligence. Destroyed property, you destroyed life. And you say you have to learn to live with it. Three people were injured in that fire. They could just as easily have been killed. I ought to show Mr. Ted Sands for what he really adds up to. Not as the artist he claims to be, but as a cold-blooded manipulator he is. All the wretches are manipulators. They have to be. This thing just got away from him, that's all. Come on, you can't still believe that. Nothing got away from him. Everything happened exactly as he wanted. No. You didn't know the loggers were going to show up there. No. But they didn't just jump you, did they? Not that first time. Wait. You know the guy you saw in the movie, Ola? I guess he was the foreman. Ted just turned the camera on him and started calling him every dirty name in the book. Now that's why he was after Sands, because that's what Sands wanted. He planted out of the last camera angle, didn't he? Well, didn't he? Well, some of it was planned. I know some of it was. What? Peggy's arrested and you're being here. Yeah, he's very big on the phone. He used it twice more up here. Well, how do you think those loggers knew where and when you'd be shooting? Where do you think they got that information? Well, that's crazy. Tracy, I need you. I need something tangible besides words. Now, he's building a reputation as a genius of truth. I need something to show that the only truth he's proving is that Ted Sands is going to make it. The only thing tangible is words. There's a script. Dramatic script. A script? I thought this was a documentary. Well, it isn't. I haven't seen it, but I know where it is. He's got it stashed in the camper under some cable boxes. I want to see some exciting stuff. <laughs> Truth is exciting, isn't it? Yep. What do you think of people who distort the truth? Well, you know what I think? That's what the revolution's all about. You're a phony, Sands. A dangerous phony. Well? You're yeah, dangerous because you're cashing in. Uh, you're clever, I admit to you, in that talent. But you're cashing in another dreams just to pay for your own ego trip. Big words. Thousands of young people look up to you because you say to them, Ted Sands is one of you. Ted Sands tells it like it is, so you listen to him. And make him powerful and rich. I work in a system where truth is a marketable commodity today. I didn't set it up. Making films costs money. I can't afford to throw open the doors and let them get in for nothing. Now, when was the last time Donovan or Dylan or any other folk hero gave away his records? Either you don't understand what I'm saying, or you're deliberately choosing not to. I say you're the worst kind of hypocrite and phony, not because you expect profit from your work, but because you're giving people who trust you colored water and labeling it wine. And your production cost sheet, Mr. Sands, where do you put Mike's eyes? Under miscellaneous expenses? You don't make too much sense. But you got what they call a command of the language, Mr. Farrell. Now, if you don't mind, the hearing is tomorrow morning. And I've got an awful lot of footage to finish running. Well, maybe this will help you understand what I'm getting at. The so-called truth you were filming, letting life unfold as you held a camera up to it. This is called a script, isn't it? Details of what you plan to shoot? This documentary film on ecology, Mr. Sands, tell me, why is there a fight set down here, written, 
planned with the loggers. There isn't. Why is Peggy's arrest planned and written? How many other accidents were planned weeks in advance? Prove it. I have the proof right here. No, you don't. What you have right there are notes I made after I shot those sequences. After. You lie, Sands. <laughs> no. Actually, I'm telling the truth. That's what we're all looking for, isn't it, Farrell? The truth? I'll tell you, though. There was a script. A real one. Of course, there's no way you could have known that. But I burned it three weeks ago. It's a nice try, Farrell. But right out of an old Richard Dix late show. How's Mike, baby? Mike is fine. Mike is set. Well, I'm gonna get him an eye specialist. As soon as I get some bread, we'll get the best eye man in the country on. I think you're a hero. He thinks that you gave him a chance to do something for his fellow man. Well, many a call, but few are chosen, right? You're dirt. You're a coward and you're dirt. Well, that's nice going, Farrell. You got her all steamed I up. I haven't what? seen her. I'm going to go to that hearing. And I'm going to tell him what you are. I'm going to tell him what Tracy told me. And just what I heard just now from you yourself. Hey, Trace can cut film together real good, baby, but... As a witness, a character witness, she could drown bad. Oh, hey, baby. Tracy's taken over 40 acid trips. Now, you know, when that comes out, do you think anybody in the straight world's gonna believe she isn't scrambled? I'm not scrambled. But you and Farrell, without proof, you got nothing except maybe a losing libel suit. I'm not scrambled! I'm not scrambled! I'm not scrambled! I'm not scrambled! Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, ye
Well, when I started, it seemed sort of tame. So I started fooling around with it. Get some conflict, you know? I twisted it a little. And I suppose a good man's gonna maybe be blind because... I had no way of knowing there was gonna be violence. But I created the provocation. And I cannot deny that. I just want you to know that if I have to go into hot for the rest of my life, I'm going to see to it that he's looked at by the best eye specialists in the world. Maybe God will forgive me. I wasn't brought up to hurt people. But I'm guilty of exactly that. Well, Mr. Sands, you're, uh, you're almost making it sound like you're going on trial in there. Yeah, I know. I intend to put myself on trial. And I intend to find myself guilty of being a phony and a manipulator. A phony because I shouted revolution and... All I wanted was what you want. So before God and... your judgment, I'm going to ask them to forgive me. Oh, thank you very much, Mr. Sands. We, we won't delay you any longer. I, I just want to say, and I think I speak for all of us, it takes a particular kind of courage to tell the truth like that. Thank you. Be sure and tell them the truth, Mr. Farrell, won't you? Well, he did it, didn't he? Expertly, adroitly. Now they're not going to believe anything we say, no matter what we do. He said it all first. Yeah, everything. Except about the phone calls, and he's right. Can't prove it, so we can't say it. What do we do now? We tell them what we can tell them. So long, Dan. You come back and see me soon. The cabin door is always open, you know. Thanks, Mike. More cheerful. I've got it all together up here. I've still got my hands, you know. I'll just, just work a little smaller, that's all. Sure. Dan, about Ted. I guess when you live alone for so long a time, you make a mistake about people. Yeah, we all do that sometimes. It's been a real pleasure, Mike. I don't think I ever meant that so much. Peace. Peace, Mike. Are you sure you don't want to go in? Be on your way back by now. We are. I mm. think you'll dig these. Sort of bringing the woods to him. But I want something understood. As far as the grant's concerned, the sleigh ride's over. Now, what they want to do about that 70,000 you've gotten, I don't know, but I'm sure you'll be hearing from us. Well, that's all right. I've made other plans. You might have to change them after Howard Publishing prints your profile. Oh, yeah? You're going to do a piece on me? You can bet on it. It'll be the truth from beginning to end. Well, I could dig that. I wonder if the kids will still pay to see your pictures. After the way you embraced the American dream in that hearing room, you really put them down. One well, of the wire services carries your story, you know. Oh, yeah, I know. I called them to come over and cover it. Well, let me tell you something about making pictures. Do you think all I want is to fill some stinking little college town art house on a Saturday night? You know what happened last night? I got two offers. One for a feature in Europe, and the other to make a series of TV specials. By the time that's over, nobody's going to remember what happened in this little hick bathroom. Well, everything's as it was, except Mike. I'll take care of Mike. You print what you want, Farrell. And in a couple of years, when my name is over some blockbuster playing to sold-out houses all across the world, you look me up and I'll score you a couple free passes. Hang on to these, will you, sugar? I gotta go find Zemo. He was supposed to 
Come in here and take a couple stills of Mike in the room. What was that, baby? Where you been? Sober enough. <laughs> yeah, you look sober. Is it true? Is what true? What she said, Tracy. Is it true? Did you make them phone calls? Bring all that blood down on our heads? On Mike? This is no place to talk, man. Come on. I don't hear you say no. Now, look. We're brothers. We're a team. What's that look in your eye? That look says maybe I don't like you for a brother. Well, all right, Zen, baby. If you don't tell anybody, I sure won't. in case you don't know how I feel. You're going down the tubes, kid. Now, I'm your brother, and I know. Now, you can't make it alone. You don't know, man. What do you know? I know you had a shot at getting out, and you blew it. Man, you're the one who said it. You're still 18th Street. And you didn't have to be. Ted, you should have had a camera on that. One take, right on. I bet on you in the survivor race. What do you mean by that? Whatever you told Zemo did the trick. I told him the truth. Oh. And now all the little Indians are gone, except you. You and Ted, the new team. Onward and upward. Goodbye, Mr. Farrell. We both appreciate what you've done for us. Thank you. 